and um, Luxor aims to build out traditional markets and derivatives to support what might be compute power commodities or a commodity market for com compute power. So um, what's your view on that? What do you guys mean by compute power as a commodity and how might that be beneficial to miners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we definitely view hash rate as a commodity. Um, you know, hash rate is a commodity that miners are producing and that they are compensated for just like really any other commodity that exists in the traditional world. Um, you know, farmers growing corn, wheat, soybeans, et cetera. Um, miners uh, mining for gold or silver or um, even, um, you know, any really any commodity out there that exists, it's it very much resembles um, what hash rate looks like. And that's, you know, why we believe that hash rate is is a commodity just like any of those other commodities out there. Break that down a little bit further. What is hash rate and how yeah. can it be commoditized? And why is there a need for hash rate derivatives? Are they for Bitcoin investors or are they more angled toward Bitcoin miners? Yeah, absolutely. So so in traditional markets or, or traditional commodities, um, and I'm using traditional commodities as everything that we just talked about, oil, gas, uh, gold, silver, wheat, corn, soybeans, et cetera. There's, you know, you have the producer of the commodity and then they are compensated for it in, you know, on the on the open market. Um, and so all of these these traditional commodity producers, you know, use financial instruments to hedge their exposure to that. Uh, future potential price change in that commodity. Um, you know, if if it's a, uh, you know, if there's there's way more wheat that was it was a great harvest, and there's way more wheat that was grown that year um, compared to previous years, the price of wheat will go down um, at the time that you actually deliver that wheat. So it, it is beneficial for farmers, for example, in that situation, to hedge their exposure and to sell that wheat ahead of time. And hash rate and the resulting Bitcoin that comes out of producing hash rate that miners are compensated for by mining pools is um, resembles very much that commodity uh, like like a wheat, for example. So um, in this particular situation, really, these financial instruments are a way to transfer risk from one party to another. And that's really all derivatives are is really a way to transfer risk from in this situation, the producer of hash rate and the producer of Bitcoin in that miner to somebody willing to purchase that that commodity off of them. Um, we do see everything in, in our hash rate derivatives markets. Typically, miners are natural sellers of are hash rate derivatives because they're naturally producing this instrument or this uh, this commodity. So they're long the commodity and then they need to hedge their exposure to changes in hash price. And just to be clear here, hash price is really the value of a certain amount of hash rate on the Bitcoin um, network and what the expected revenue per day is of that hash rate of that one peta hash, for example. Right. So previously, miners have had trouble hedging. There's not been a lot of instruments beyond just Bitcoin futures and options and CME contracts for hedging. So how do hash price yeah. or hash rate derivatives um, alter that landscape? And with Bitcoin price being at 26,000 right now, whereas two, three weeks ago, it was closer to 32. How are those markets functioning right now? Yeah, great question. Um, Yes, you have you have seen miners in the past use those more traditional forms of um, of derivatives, of using options or of using Bitcoin futures or options on Bitcoin futures to hedge their exposure. But in reality, it's almost an imperfect hedge. It's only hedging one component of your revenues. So when you're producing hash rate, you're compensated in Bitcoin from um, from a mining pool. And the compensation typically has to do with a the block subsidy. These are these are the inputs to what the revenue that a miner can expect to receive. The block subsidy, transaction fees, and that is a uh, function of network difficulty. So obviously, if there are more miners on the Bitcoin network, their the expected revenue for a certain amount of hash rate decreases. So there's more competition for that same. Uh, re revenue or rewards. Um, so therefore, you know, using Bitcoin futures to s just sell futures um, or selling call options on on Bitcoin as well, it really is an imperfect hedge to match the revenues that you're generating as a Bitcoin miner. Hash rate derivatives and, and our kind of hash price forwards allow you to match those exact revenues to a perfect hedge for what you are producing in hash rate. Um, so it, it literally lines up the revenues perfectly, which is fantastic for miners to be able to hedge the exact 
um, and replicate the exact um, revenue that they're creating with their hash rate. Basically meaning I can project um, what three months or six months out, what price, what sort of price volatility there might be, lock in a rate and open a call on that. Is that essentially what miners are doing? Yeah. So, so really nothing to do with options, but um, these are, we call them forwards. They're very much resembling what futures would look like or what people are used to what futures would look like. It's essentially locking in a guaranteed revenue or guaranteed price for your future production of hash rate. So for example, right now, I know you referenced this a little bit earlier, the value of one petahash on the Bitcoin network. And, th- and let me back up actually just a little bit there. Luxor has this hash rate index and this hash rate index um, quantifies the value of one petahash on the Bitcoin network at any one point in time. Um, so when Bitcoin price was up at thirty thirty one thousand dollars uh, just a, a week, week and a half ago, we were looking at a uh, USD value of right around seventy two to seventy four dollars per petahash on the Bitcoin network. Since Bitcoin price dropped to right around twenty six thousand, I think today you're looking at instead of seventy two to seventy four dollars per petahash on the Bitcoin network, and this is all quantified by Lexer's hash rate index you're now looking at a price of right around $60 per pet hash. So that, that's a pretty steep drop off. I think it's a, like close to 15% drop off in revenue that a miner can expect to receive for one pet hash on the Bitcoin network. And that's a, that's a huge difference. Now you have yeah. uh, multiple ways of diversifying revenue streams and then also hedging risk because of these hash rate derivatives. So miners can now rely on renewables, they can explore immersion, they can um, co-locate, they can allocate rack space to GPUs, which might be doing AI modeling and training and all that other stuff. They can hedge with these hash price or hash rate derivatives now. It sounds like the sector has evolved and become more dynamic. Yeah. That's exactly right. I think we're what we're doing here is really porting um, all of these these instruments and and risk management techniques that exist in traditional finance and haven't completely exist or matured in the crypto space yet. So we're porting them over to crypto and allowing um, miners to to hedge their their exact revenues. Um, and and I do strongly believe that you know you, you've seen miners in the past that have acted you know maybe the, the term is somewhat irresponsible. Um, but they, they do have a long-term view of Bitcoin and they want to hold that Bitcoin for, for a long period of time. I think you will see, start to see shareholders and boards of some of these mining companies. And this is eventually, maybe not in the next six to 12 months, but eventually you will see these shareholders and boards require their companies to be hedged, um, just like any other traditional commodity producer. You wouldn't see, for example, Exxon or, or any traditional commodity producer out there hold on to you know hundreds of thousands or millions of barrels of oil, for example, for the next two years years hoping that the price appreciates. Um, and I think, you know, if you have a, a great arbitrage on the price of energy versus the outputs and hash price as a miner, um, you've basically locked in a profit. And the way to lock that in really is with hedging um, using hash rate derivatives. Exactly. And larger miners also have the option of kind of the demand response um, where they can turn on and turn off and curtail and be paid for curtailing. So the industry is becoming more dynamic. You know, after the halving, there's probably going to be a lot of volatility in the hash rate because of um, some miners needing to shut off and figure things out. And it's just going to be all over the place, I imagine. And then it'll normalize. So I guess you could assume there will be a lot of interest then on the short side for hash rate derivatives, wouldn't there? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great point. Um, I think the trend, obviously, for the last eight months of this year has been steady hash rate growth on the Bitcoin network month to month all the time. And it hasn't stopped yet. And I I don't think it will through the end of the year either. There are lots of uh, miners that are continuing to bring on more mines, more hash rate onto the network. Um, And I think some of the base cases by, you know, both Luxor and Galaxy and some other um, research institutions are a base case of somewhere between 430 and 470 exahash on the Bitcoin network. Um, So I think we'll continue to see that trend grow, maybe somewhere around, I don't know what the number is, another 10% to 15% by the end of the year. 
Um, but I think it's, uh, you, you know, you hit the nail right on the head with uh, looking forward to the having is like we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of these miners that are not break even at eight cents or seven cents per kilowatt hour. And so while you'll continue to see that increased hash rate growth into the end of the year, I do strongly believe that at the having or the months post having, you will start to see some hash rate come offline as those miners become unprofitable.